Michelle, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Gothenburg, and this is a poster about basically what I'm trying to do right now. Uh, and the title is Investigating How Do You Controls on Groundwater Drought Hazard in Sweden and Finland. So basically we have a problem, and the problem is that we have, uh, have had, and are still having, uh, fairly politically unexpected and unequally distributed drought problems, uh, or groundwater scarcity problems, I should say, uh, in the last few years in Sweden and Finland. Uh, so many farmers and individuals, individuals in these areas are dependent on the ground, like on, on small aquifers for their private uh, drinking water supply. Uh, and there is very little knowledge about uh, groundwater sensitivity to uh, low or very low so say water tables uh, in the Nordic countries because people here tend to take uh, water resources for granted. So what we want to do is uh, to elucidate similarities in hydrogeological systems which respond similarly to meteorological conditions and then explain meteorological drought propagation to the groundwater based on these system characteristics. So this is sort of like a workflow we want to get at eventually, sort of an aim. Uh, so there are some advantages to the study area and uh, that is because um, uh, the geology is fairly homogeneous uh, <laughs> as compared to uh, our southern neighbours. Uh, it's mainly gneisses and granites and some sedimentary bedrock here, here. Yeah, not very much. And the groundwater is mainly hugely affected by unconsolidated glacial deposits, so eskers and emmerines and glacial outwash and uh, stuff like that. Uh, and so how we classify drought at the moment, or one way to do it, is to use a standardized groundwater index. And basically you get uh, like extreme or very low groundwater levels based on historic uh, water levels uh, that goes back to at least 30 years, so it's like a climate average. Uh, and you can see these are all the wells that we're looking at in Sweden, and these are all the wells we're looking at in Finland. And you can see some regional differences. Uh, some drought patterns are completely, or not completely different, but they're, uh, they vary in severity. So you can see like the 2003 drought in Finland was uh, impacting quite a lot more of the wells there as compared to Sweden. Uh, and we believe that this is uh, due to uh, climate regimes. So working with that, we can, you know, uh, come to some conclusions, but we get that. Right? Uh, so the project we're using is we're using the SGI uh, to compare that to the standardized precipitation index. Uh, so you get an aggregation period of maybe like you aggregate the precipitation signal for over like a period of uh, 1 to 48 months. And then you correlate that to the groundwater level and see which groundwater level corresponds best to which, or which uh, SPI aggregation period corresponds, to, uh, corresponds best to the groundwater level. And then you define the characteristics, characteristics of the groundwater or hydrogeologic characteristics uh, around these wells, and then you correlate that to, uh, so maybe, say for example, uh, eskers uh, or groundwater observations in eskers correlate very well to an SPI aggregation period of five months. That's not really true, but uh, as a, yeah, a way to, and uh, this is what, how you want to work in the future. Uh, but however, yeah, so the aggregation period alone cannot predict groundwater droughts. Uh, so that's why we're using, uh, further on, we're using these other characteristics to look more closely at this. Uh, so we also do need to uh, extensively characterize our systems. And we will use PCA, so principal component analysis, uh, and conditional inference trees to do this. And these are statistical methods. So, so far, we haven't gotten very far, but uh, this is sort of uh, an example of a PCA. Uh, it's a PC1 and PC2. They come for about 50% of the variation in 10 Swedish example wells that I've used. Uh, and this, so basically, uh, on the vertical, no, sorry, horizontal axis is the PC1, and uh, on the uh, vertical axis is the PC2. And these arrows, like the length of these arrows, correspond to uh, the strength of the correlation. And basically, you can see here that um, these different colors are uh, wells corresponding best to different aggregation periods of the precipitation signal. So, for example, uh, to the right, it's zero to three months, and then to the very left, it's 25 to 48 months. And this variation is across PC1. 
So then you can see that uh, these variables uh, correspond to most of the between best aggregation period correlation difference, uh, which is here the difference between uh, the water table and meters below the surface, which is the maximum and the minimum uh, water levels that we found at this uh, place, and then soil thickness, uh, sedimentary grain size, and basically uh, how many droughts we've had specified at the moment for these wells. Uh, and then within these groups, there's also a lot of variation, and this can be mostly explained by surface elevation, land cover, uh, and... Okay, sorry, this was... Wait. Yeah, okay, sorry. So this was the main water table, I mean, the meter below the surface, and uh, within the groups, it's uh, the water table difference, so the maximum and the minimum uh, levels that we record at the sites. However, uh, we're still to investigate causation and additional var variables uh, and the like. So in the future, we're gonna, we're in, uh, at the moment, we're working on um, modeling snowmelt. And we're also getting uh, more data, but we're mainly using all the existing data, so it's uh, accessing agency or information that agencies have.